Welcome to Excel Beginning Steps. I'm Trainer Lori. What are beginning steps? Well, we're going to look at the very beginning. If you've never used Excel before, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the layout, uh, data entry options, uh, the very basic stuff, all the way up to printing. So why bother with Excel? Well, it's a great program for creating uh, spreadsheets, in other words, uh, crunching numbers, for uh, creating calendars, for charts. It's a, a, a wonderful program for lots of different activities. Uh, my mother even used it for creating a newsletter. <laughs> so you can use it for lots of different things. Excel is made up of a workbook, and that's where you, when you open it, becomes a workbook. And each workbook has lots of columns in it. Notice the columns are named after letters you actually get 16,384 columns in the 2010. And you can see that it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Well, it goes up to A, A, and then it keeps going all the way up to X, F, D. So there's lots of columns in it. As well as columns, there are also rows. And if you want to increase a column, simply right-click on it. In fact, you can see lots of options. If you want to add uh, a column in between other columns, simply right-click on it. You can also hide and change the size of them. We have over a million rows now, and you can see the rows are numbered. It's a lot of place to store data. In fact, you can have 32,000 plus characters in every cell. So again, it, it, it's a great place to store a lot of data. There are 255 sheets available by default, but you can always add a new sheet simply by clicking the little star. Now, each worksheet can store all of this data, and you can have 255 plus worksheets. It probably can do everything you want it to do. Each cell is named after the intersection of the column and the row. So you can put your data in the cell or in the formula bar. What I generally do is click in the cell first and then add the data in the formula bar, like that. So I click in the cell and then put the data up here in the formula bar, and it will show up in both places. If you double click, you can edit right in the cell. I prefer, though, to edit in the formula bar because it acts like Word. So if you like to be able to place your cursor wherever you want and type whatever you want, you can do that right in the formula bar or by double clicking in the cell. Now, when we create formulas, the formulas will also be in two places, but you'll see different information. You'll see the formula in the formula bar. And notice formulas start with an equal sign. So equal 2 times 5, and you will see the value or the answer, which is known as the value in Excel, in the cell. Sometimes there's not enough space for everything I want to put in it. So when I start typing, you can see that it has flowed out of column A and into column B. Well, it's nothing is actually in column B. In fact, if I were to put something in column B, then the text from column A would actually stop there. So if I want to increase the size of the column, I have three options. One is to click and drag this line. One is to double click the line. It automatically expands it to fit whatever happens to be in that column. Or I can right click on it and choose column width. Now, if you see this, you see this is not text. See, this text here is cut off, and I can see that it's cut off, so I can't see all of the data in here. However, these are hash marks because what's in it are numbers. And Excel doesn't want you to accidentally read the numbers wrong by reading a, a long number as a shorter number. So it puts in the hash marks so you can't see the whole thing. Again, double click on this line, and it will expand it to fit the selection. Sometimes I want to select everything. For example, I want to make a global change. However, uh, you may not want to, for example, format every cell in the whole worksheet with the same formatting, uh, certainly not in 2010. And that is because there's so many cells, that's a lot of formatting uh, for the memory. And you might make your, your workbook too big to email, for example. So while this is the Select All button, you instead might want to click in the data and then hit Control A. And that will simply select where your data is. And your data ends with an empty row or an empty column. Therefore, you should never use an empty row or an empty column, except to say this is the end of my data. So keep that in mind when you're putting data in your, in your worksheet that you do not leave blanks. 
You can also select multiple cells uh, without selecting all of them by using either control, which you've probably used this before. Uh, use control with a click and it uh, allows you to uh, uh, select non-contiguous cells or cells that don't touch each other. Okay, so in this case, this cell and this cell. Or I can use shift click. When I click in the cell, you can see that my cursor has now changed. It is now a fat plus sign. And when I click and drag it, it will increase the selection area. So if I want to select both of these areas for some reason, I click and drag. However, if I click on the line, you can see that it changes. My cursor now changes to four uh, arrows with another arrow on top of it. And when I click and drag then, it actually moves the data from one cell to the other. So where your cursor is when you click matters. I can use my cut and copy and paste just like in Word or any other program. I use Control C to copy or Control V uh, X to cut. And when I do that, it gets these, these what I call running lights. Uh, everybody has a different name for them, but they're generally called running lights around the selection. And that tells me this is ready to be copied. Now when I paste, I have uh, other options. When I paste, you can see that there's a drop down arrow and I have multiple options there. When I cut, of course, it takes it out of the original cell and only shows it in the second cell. Paste special is you have options when you uh, click the drop down, including right mouse clicking. If I right mouse click, I, I can choose Paste Special. But Paste Special now in 2010 is really obvious. It's right here where you can see it. Or if I right mouse click and choose Paste Special, it will look like this. Now the benefit of right mouse clicking is I can see the words, so I know exactly what it means. Where here, I may not know what the icons stand for. Well, when you paste, you have a couple of options. For example, if I'm copying this number, 345, which is a value, uh, I don't really have to do anything. I just hit paste because it doesn't have any special formatting. There's nothing special about it. But if there is something special, for example, I have this formatted. It's bold and it's got uh, a dollar sign. And this is an actual accounting format. I want to take the format as well. I want to copy not just the text, the value, but also the format. And so I have the option of choosing the format. And then anything with the paintbrush is format as well. This is a formula. And if I copy and paste, I, it's asked me, do I want the formula or do I want the value? Do I want to use that formula over again or do I just want to see the answer? So you do have some options there. Now you may be wondering what this star is. Well, if you haven't created a formula on the computer before, then the plus means add, the minus sign there means subtract, the star or asterisk means multiply, an X will work, but it prefers the star, and a forward slash, and here's how you can remember it. It always moves to the right, so the slash must move to the right as well. It must lean toward the right, and that is divide. Now there's one more place to click in the bottom right corner. Now remember we can click on the uh, text or on the cell itself or on the line and I, I got two different cursors. But if I hover over the bottom right corner, the bottom right corner here is autofill handle. And when I hover over it, my cursor turns into a crosshair. And when I click on that autofill handle, it will actually copy the data for me. So I don't have to use the copy and paste, which is two steps. All I have to do is drag my autofill handle and it will copy and paste that text. However, if it's a date, it's going to actually increase the date. So you can see Jan or 1-1-2012 or Monday. And when I click and drag that autofill handle, it, sh it increases the date. So you can see it's a wonderful tool for creating the headers for our data. When we uh, want to increase our autofill, see this is our normal cursor uh, over the autofill handle. It's the crosshairs. Well, when I hold down control while I use autofill, look at my cursor's changed. It now has a little uh, plus sign as well. And look what it's done. Instead of copying the data, it actually increases the data. So if I want to increase by one, then I will use autofill plus the control. What if I want to increase by 5? 
All I have to do is set a precedence. Remember, we click in the cell to select more than one cell. So I click and drag over both of them, and then I use my autofill, and it says, oh, you're increasing by five. Let me continue. Now that we understand what goes in the cell, we want to create a worksheet. And to do that, you'll want headers. Excel knows it's a header when it's bolded. So you can see that this is underlined, and this is not bolded. Neither of those matter. What matters is if it's bold, then Excel recognizes it as, as a header. In some of more, the more advanced functions, it will recognize it and not take uh, that data into the totals. So that's a good thing. Put our data in, but we might also want to put a formula in. Now you can see here there's two kinds of formulas and they always start with equal sign. You see that? And that is putting in the actual values or putting in the cell reference. If you'll notice that this cell is named D3 because it's the intersection of D and 3. And D3 is a great way to create my, my formula because if I use D3 and my data changes, then I don't have to change my subtotal as well. That formula is always going to be good. Even if my data changes, it will reflect that change automatically. So it's a good idea to use the cell reference instead of a number. There's also something called functions that's more advanced, and those are formulas that Excel creates for us. All we have to know is what they're called, and then follow that name with two parentheses. And uh, we'll cover that in a different class. Once we've created our cells, we might want to go back and format. And I recommend that you format after you've put your data in, and not before, because the formatting stays in the cell whether there's data in there or not. For example, uh, if I use general, there's lots of options under general. General is just no specific format. It's numbers or letters. It doesn't matter. But if I specifically want it to be a number or currency or accounting or whatever, there's a lot of ch options in here. And if you want more options, you can come down here to more number formats. and Or you can also click this little box to open your dialog box or control one, which is my favorite way of getting into the format cells dialog box. And there's lots of options for formatting. I have one whole class just on the custom number format. The biggest question, especially for a new user, is how do I get rid of all that formatting? Let's say I've put some formatting on and I've decided I want to rearrange my spreadsheet. So I don't want the date format in that cell, but every time I put a number in it comes up as a date. Err, very frustrating, right? Well, right on your home tab is a clear, it looks kind of like an eraser. So you can clear all or just your format. Or you can clear the content without uh, clearing the format. So you have multiple options for clearing in here. And then finally, now that I've got my spreadsheet set, I want to print it. But I don't want to print everything. I don't want to print all the uh, data on my sheet. I just want to print this data. And so I would select the data first. If it is contiguous without uh, breaks, then you can just click in it and hit Control A. And then under the Page Layout tab, we'll go to Print Area, Set Print Area. And then that says, oh, that's where you want to print. And then when you go into File, Print, then you have the option of um, printing. Also, you have the option of scaling it. For example, I can see here that this is 16 sheets, but it really shouldn't be 16 pages. It should only be 8. So that tells me that I have a real good feeling that I had another column break into another page. And I don't really want two pages for all my columns. I want it to fit on one page. So I have options down here to fit all my columns on one page. So then it would shrink that to eight sheets instead of 16. That's all for now. Thank you. See you next time.